been a very happy Thanksgiving to you. Let's go back in history. Back in the autumn of 1621, 400 years ago, the pilgrims of P Plymouth celebrated their first harvest in the New World. Most Americans believe that's the story of the first Thanksgiving. There's just one problem. It wasn't the first. Two years earlier and hundreds of miles away, a group of English settlers crossed the Atlantic. Just up the James River at the Berkeley Plantation in Virginia, they dropped anchor. There, the captain made sure to proclaim a day of thanksgiving to Almighty God. Here's their forgotten story. Thanksgiving has been a beloved American holiday for centuries. But what most people don't know is that the first official Thanksgiving didn't happen at Plymouth Rock in 1621. It took place two years earlier along the James River here at Berkeley. King James I gave a, a grant of 8,000 acres of land to a group of four men in Virginia and settled on this land of 8,000 acres they had been given. Graham is a descendant of Captain John Woodleaf, the man chosen to lead a crew of 37 men on the expedition that set sail for Virginia, September 16, 1619. Uh, they were given a list of 10 instructions from the Berkeley Company through England. Uh, and the very first one of those instructions is, once you land to, to give thanks for your safe voyage, to do that perpetually and annually. On December 4th, 1619, the party landed at Berkeley. And they put their luggage on the hard ground, gazed at the woods enclosing them, and listened in complete silence. And then Captain Woodleaf said, let us pray. They kneeled and they just said a prayer, thanking God for giving them safe arrival in Virginia. It was a solemn time of prayer that, as mandated, was observed every year following. But three years later, Native Americans attacked the settlers in what became known as the Massacre of 1622. Many were killed, others scattered. The tradition of the first Thanksgiving would be lost to history. The site eventually became the Berkeley Plantation and would play a role throughout Virginia's and America's history. Then in 1931, more than three centuries after Woodleaf landed, Dr. Lyon Tyler uncovered the Nibley Papers that documented the events at Berkeley, including the first Thanksgiving. He shared his discovery with the Jameson family, who have owned Berkeley since 1907. And it was a huge surprise. No one knew that America's first Thanksgiving was here and in Virginia. Then in 1958, Senator John Wicker invited descendants of Captain Woodleaf to the site to commemorate the Berkeley landing, and the Virginia Thanksgiving Festival was born. The mission of our organization, the Virginia Thanksgiving Festival, is to educate the public uh, in the historical significance of the first Thanksgiving in America. In 1963, President John F. Kennedy gave the Berkeley Thanksgiving its rightful place in history. We really consider ourselves not uh, the owners of Berkeley, but we consider ourselves the stewards, the, the keepers of this place that has so much history. The event has been held every year since and highlights Berkeley's rich history, from the first Thanksgiving, through the Civil War era, to the traditions of today that all started with a prayer of thanksgiving. This Thanksgiving, let's remember whether it's in Plymouth or in Berkeley or throughout the land, our first settlers, the first English settlers, resolved to give thanks to God Almighty for this wonderful land. Let's resolve together as a people. Let us give thanks on Thanksgiving Day. Thank him for everything he's done, the wonderful liberties we have, uh, all the things, all the blessings. Let us recognize it all comes from him. The Seymour family has plenty to be thankful for. For starters, they're all able to gather together around the Thanksgiving table. That was in doubt two years ago, after 15-year-old Jade fell off her horse. She slammed her head so hard, she suffered a brain bleed. Doctors had to remove a large section of her skull to stop the swelling. So what hope was there for Jade's recovery? See for yourself. It was a beautiful day as 15-year-old Jade Seymour saddled her Mustang Kateri for an afternoon ride with her friend Sam. When she left, she said, okay, mom, I'm gonna go riding, we're leaving now. That's the last I heard from her. 
They were about a mile from the house when something spooked Jade's horse. Sam, who was in the lead, heard Jade yell and spun around to see her slide off and hit the ground head first. Sam rushed to her side. Jade's nose was bleeding and she was unresponsive. With no cell service in the remote area, Sam couldn't reach 911. Reluctant to leave Jade, all he could do help! was yell for help. help. Help! Soon after, Jade's mom, Rachel, noticed the horses had returned alone. It was pretty common for me as a kid to, you know, get bucked off and walk home and, and have the horses come back by themselves. Um, and I called for the kids. She got no answer. Meanwhile, a neighbor had heard Sam's yells for help and called 911. First responders were on the way. Deputy Brian Lundquist was the first to arrive. I immediately realized that Jade was in very serious condition. It was obvious that there's a brain injury of some sort. Deputy Lundquist immobilized her until the paramedics arrived a short time later. By then, a helicopter had been dispatched to the nearest open area. They just started talking about getting everything stabilized and getting her down to the landing zone for the helicopter as quick as possible. Back at the house. When I saw the fire truck go by, my stomach dropped, and that's when I knew something terrible had happened. Rachel rushed down the road to find paramedics loading Jade into an ambulance. I just saw her body and her hair like matted with blood and dirt and blood. There was a lot of blood. The ambulance took Jade and Rachel to the waiting helicopter that flew them to Valley Children's Hospital near Fresno, California. Soon after, the hospital called Jade's dad, Scott, who had been driving home from out of town. The information was sparse, and Scott prayed, struggling to stay calm. I knew there was a head injury. I didn't know if there was a neck or back. I knew it was grave enough to dispatch a helicopter out to our area. Dr. Molly Dorfman was the pediatric intensive care physician on duty when Jade arrived. When she first came in, she looked incredibly ill. She sort of came in and out of consciousness to the point where she stopped protecting her airway, meaning her brain had sort of shut down a little bit. They called in pediatric neurosurgeon, Dr. Julia Sharma, to assess the CT scan of Jade's brain. There was what we call a contusion in the frontal lobe of the brain on the right side, um, which is kind of like a bruise within the brain or bleeding within the brain. So when you have something that's expanding inside from swelling and it's stuck against a closed space, which is the skull, the pressure will go up and up. Eventually, if that's left untreated, that will push the brain down through the narrow opening at the base of the skull and can lead to death. Doctors had Jade sedated and intubated and prescribed medication to ease the swelling. Her chances of survival were high, but doctors didn't know whether she'd ever be the same again. I still wasn't sure how she would recover because we were seeing already some weakness on the opposite side of the body. The next 48 hours were critical, so Scott and Rachel asked others to join them in prayer the incessant prayer of god please be with jade god please help jade god if you can bring her back please bring her back two days later jade's brain pressure was still critically high forcing dr sharma to perform a craniotomy removing a large section of her skull to allow the brain room to expand while that brought the pressure to safe levels jade still wasn't showing signs of improvement I looked at Dr. Sharma and I said, she can fully recover from this, right? And she just put her eyes down and she said, um, we don't know, we don't know yet. The waiting and the prayer continued. Rachel posted updates and prayer requests on Facebook. And the prayers started pouring in. It was a huge comfort. I had a friend tell me, don't let anybody else define what only God can do. And that I held on to the entire time we were there. Then two days later on Thanksgiving, she started to open her eyes and then she could move her right side. We were finally given a tiny bit of hope and it was given to us by God on Thanksgiving morning. And that hope grew. The next day, Jade was able to follow simple commands and communicate with her hand. 
we were able to take the breathing tube out, which is incredible. And in doing that, we were able to advance her care, get her to rehab, start working on those deficits that we knew she might have, and try to get her back home again. Jade progressed through her physical, speech, and mental therapy with a speed that surprised her doctors. All of these things that could sometimes take a week to happen, she was kind of doing in the span of a day. That was remarkable, and that was really wonderful to see. Incredibly, less than a month after the accident, Jade went home. I got out of the hospital and I couldn't stop seeing the amazingness. And then just being home and being able to like see my family whenever I wanted to, see my brothers because they weren't at the hospital all the time. And be back into a sense of normalcy was really, really important and huge for me. Six weeks later, Jade had the surgery to repair her skull. Today, life in the Seymour household is back to normal, except now, Thanksgiving takes on a deeper meaning for Jade and her family. Every Thanksgiving, we get to see the miracle that happened on that day. It's just a reminder of life is precious. You know, you look around the table and you just go, this could be so different. This could have been the worst holiday, and now it's the best. It was so tragic, but now it's the best because God answers prayer. He wants you to be healthy. When you understand that, that he deeply wants you to be healthy, that he wants you to prosper and be in health just as your soul is in health, he wants all of these things for you. He is a loving heavenly father, and he wants to provide for his children. What is he looking for? Well, he's looking for faith. The eyes of the Lord go to and fro over the whole earth to show himself strong for those whose hearts are loyal to him. Now, how do you show your heart is loyal? Well, you, you say, God, I believe you're doing a miracle here. I, I, I see what you've done for others. I know you can do that for me. When you come to him with your complaint, and there is scripture, I poured out my complaint before the Lord. When you're done with all of that, today on Thanksgiving, today, give him thanks for the miracles that are coming your way. That's how you show your heart is loyal to him. You know he wants to provide. You know he wants to heal. He, you know he wants to save. You know he wants to deliver. Why do you know these things? because those are his names in the Bible. He wants to live up to his name because he is his name. That's the message. That's the whole word that's come and become flesh. Let it become flesh in you today. Now, we're going to pray. Before we pray, we've got some other miracles. Here's Stephanie. I was awakened by a panic attack. They're so scary. They feel like a heart attack. I just started praying. I couldn't go back to sleep. So I turned on the 700 Club. Well, the lady that was hosting with Gordon said, there's someone with pain in the chest. Touch it and you're being healed. I sat up and said, that's for me. I prayed and fell asleep. I watch you all the time, and this is the first time I felt you speak to me. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, Gordon, this is Linda. She sent this by email. She said, I've suffered for three years with a nerve problem, which consists of shooting pain on various parts of my body and a rash all over, which made me feel as if razor blades were embedded in my clothing. How awful. Mm. At the end of the program, Gordon mentioned someone with a nerve problem and said to raise your hands, which I did not in expectation, but more in despair. Last night, for the first time, I slept through the night and I didn't wake up to itching having pain. What an awesome God we have. Hallelujah. I love that. <laughs> yes. You can raise your hands in despair. You can, you can come to him, but realize you're raising your hands in hope. You're, you're giving one of the oldest expressions in Christianity. You can see it in the catacombs under, under the city of Rome. Raised hands, knowing that God wants to fill those hands. He wants to fill your every desire. He wants to be with you. The whole reason we take communion, the whole reason for the Eucharist, giving thanks for the meal that God has prepared for those who believe, 
that wonderful supper of communion where we get to partake in the divine nature. We get to have heaven draw near to us. In heaven, is there anybody sick? Answer is no. Anybody with a brain problem? Answer is no. Anybody with nerve problem? Answer, no. Let's have the kingdom of heaven draw near to you. Terry and I are going to pray. We're going to agree. Here's a wonderful verse. When two or more agree touching anything. So Terry and I will be your two or more. And you touch. In an act of faith, reach out and touch that area. In an act of faith, let that other hand reach up to heaven. And let's create a great circle of prayer just for you. Lord, we come to you now. And we ask, we ask believing, we ask in faith, we ask knowing you are the answer. Lord, turn your eyes towards those who have pain, those who have disease. Stretch forth your hand to heal, to restore, to be there all in all. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Uh, there's someone, you're in a hospital bed, and I just see a neck brace, and um, you've had uh, a, a neck injury, and just, just very gingerly, just turn that neck and realize all of that has been healed. You are healed. You are made whole now in Jesus' name. Just lift your arms to him. God is, is healing throughout your body. Uh, the doctors are going to be amazed at what God has done for you. Karen? Yeah, there's someone else. You've been in a serious, um, you've had a serious accident. I don't know that it was a vehicle, but you've damaged your spine and you have had no ability to walk since then. You're in a wheelchair. I don't really know when this happened, but right now you're gonna begin to feel some tingling in your legs and in your very lower back. God is restoring feeling to you. He's restoring movement to you. You are going to be able to walk again. Lift up your hands and receive that. And then just begin to, to praise the Lord in the midst of his doing all of this for you. Uh, there's someone you've had an um, injury to your jaw on the right side. And you're actually wired up this Thanksgiving. And, and you're not looking forward to the Thanksgiving meal because you're, you're drinking through a straw. God is healing you and he's setting you free from all of that. He's knitting everything together properly. Everything's going to be normal. Just rejoice and give thanks to him for he's seen you, he's seen your need. He's healing you right now in Jesus' name. Someone else, you've had um, uh, an injury to your forehead. You fell and I, I believe you hit a curb. Um, and God is restoring you. He's restoring everything concerning your, 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 your brain, this concussion you're suffering with, uh, the lingering injury above your left eye. God is healing all of that, left eye to the bridge of the nose. God's healing all of that right now. In Jesus' name, be restored. Lord, we thank you. We thank you today on Thanksgiving. We thank you for breath. We thank you for life. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you that you love us, that you care so much for us. We thank you for everything. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you've been healed, let us know, 1-800-700-7000. And if you need prayer this Thanksgiving, we have people that are Willing to pray for you even on Thanksgiving Day. All you have to do is pick up the phone and call us. 1-800-700-7000. Well, this holiday season, be a blessing to the family members of our nation's military. For a gift of $25 or more, you can send a special Superbook Merry Christmas box to the children of an active duty parent. It's filled with DVDs, activity books, and much more. And to donate a Superbook Merry Christmas box to a hero's family, all you have to do is call us, 1-800-700-7000. Or you can visit cbn.com slash bless military, or you can text the words bless military to 71777. 
Do it now and be a blessing to our active duty military families. It's a recognition that if they have a parent in active duty, they're serving too, and we want to recognize their service with this wonderful gift. Do it now, 1-800-700-7000. Well, Thanksgiving is a time of holiday traditions, especially when it comes to food. This year, we wanted to bring back one of our favorite holiday cooking segments. A few years ago, Ellie Krieger joined me in our 700 Club kitchen with some tasty ideas for turning Thanksgiving leftovers into mouth-watering meals. So let's take a look back at one of our holiday favorites. Hi, I'm Ellie Krieger. Host Ellie Krieger is the host and executive producer of the public television show Ellie's Real Good Food and formerly host of the Food Network's hit show Healthy Appetite. She's also a registered dietitian who understands that preparing a home-cooked meal for your family during the holidays can be overwhelming, not to mention the dirty dishes. In her new cookbook, Hole in One, Ellie makes dinner with your family easier, healthier, and tastier by offering One Pot Wonders full of flavor for your day after Thanksgiving feast. Please welcome back to the 700 Club, Ellie Krieger. It's great to have great you back to with be us. here. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, and you too. You know, we all love all those traditional things that we do for Thanksgiving, but then there is the day after, and the next day can sometimes be just as much work trying to figure out where do I house all of this in my refrigerator? Oh, yeah. What do I do with it? And also it? right now you might feel you'll never be hungry again, <laughs> but I promise you will be hungry tomorrow. <laughs> so how do we make the day after simple? Yeah, and making it easy and no work. Everyone wants to be relaxing the day after, absolutely. So one pot, one yes. pot options, and I have so many to share with you well, that use up those leftovers too. That wonderful new cookbook that you have out, the whole in one, that's W-H-O-L-E, because yes. it's the whole meal. Yes. It's complete healthy meals in one sheet pan, pot, or skillet. That's awesome. 125 recipes yes. and you have And many of them are great ways to use up your Thanksgiving leftovers. Yes. Um, and it's really super simple, so I was going to share some. What do you consider a, like a whole meal when you talk about prepping something yes. and making it all? What, what are the elements? So what I really look for as a dietitian and a chef, it has to be delicious. It has to be compellingly satisfying. Mm -hmm. But from a nutritional point of view, you want want to make sure that it has adequate protein. So even if the recipes are vegetarian in the book, then they have enough protein to be satisfying. And then if it has meat in it, you want to make sure it has a lot of vegetables and or whole grain uh -huh. so that it's rich in fiber and phytonutrients and all that wonderful good stuff and overall balance. So what we're telling you is Ellie's done the work for us. Yes. How awesome is that? Yes, I, I lost <laughs> some sleep. I'll tell you thinking about some of these ideas. So I'm, I'm really proud of them and, and I think it's really it's fun. Great that you think that way. Let's look at what you've brought to show us today. You're simmering some onions yeah, here. Yeah, so I have some onions here. I'm making these, um, well, in the book, it's chicken tinga tacos, but for Thanksgiving, it's turkey. turkey tinga tacos. And it's a great right. way to use leftover turkey. So I just have some uh, onions and garlic, which I've just okay. simmered here. And then really no chopping. It's all happening in one pot. It's really fun. This is just basically a can of pureed tomatoes, a 14 ounce okay. can. And then I use some solid Salsa verde, again, just a jar um, of salsa verde. So again, it's really just super simple. And then I'm gonna season that up with some chipotle pepper. And this mm. comes in a can too. Really? There's usually uh, quite a bit in the can. You don't wanna use a lot because it has a it's little hot. heat yeah. to it, mm -hmm. but it gives this wonderful smoky taste that I just- Oh yes, I just you got the blast. It's lovely. <laughs> so you can put that into taste and then some of the adobe sauce that comes in the can. And then with the leftover that is in the can, it's really easy to freeze. You just put it in little baggies oh, and then you okay. can have that so I, I like that wish. as a tip some Good salt time. and pepper of course and then you just simmer this down and a little bit of broth and then you just simmer this down a little of this, this so we your... can just dump that in if you like and that's the idea you simmer this down until it's nice and You're concentrated kind of... mm -hmm. and I'll show you what it winds up looking like this so it's nice and concentrated, Ooh, and you yes. have this very richly flavorful sauce now because it's all concentrated in there. And then you add your turkey right okay. in. And then you just cook this a little bit, and you the smoke, Ooh, you really wow. get that smoky essence now, huh? Yes. Then you just stir in that turkey, and you coat it all, and then you wind up with your taco mixture here. 
and um, oh, so tacos is not wonderful. just for Taco Tuesday. You know, yes. you can have Taco Friday now too, I guess, <laughs> right? Um, but this would definitely last in the fridge for a few days, actually. That's so awesome. you get that, and then you basically you put out all the ingredients, all the toppings, just like your regular soft tacos. I like to use uh, whole wheat or corn tortillas, and you kind of build your tacos. Mm -hmm. So that's really fun. We have some built there. Here you can see the tacos already built. Yeah. You know, you, you, I often marvel when we talk that you think in these terms, but how do you, when you start from scratch, how do you know how much to add to things as you're creating and building? Oh and my gosh. So I usually, um, well, I have sort of a sense of it. I've been cooking for so long now. I have hundreds of measure. recipes. It's like a little of this, a little well, of Well, when that. I'm testing recipes, I have to measure really carefully. When so I'm cooking at home. teach others. Yes. Exactly. And also so I can do the nutrition analysis because for all the recipes in the book I have the full nutrition analysis awesome and then I want to give you adequate measures so that you know uh -huh. um, so there's no question mark so it's foolproof so this is one option yes. let's move down so here and take choices. a look at some of the others yes Ooh, so that looks wonderful. this is a grain bowl. So this is made in a single skillet. So you see that um, the tacos were also one skillet. Uh -huh. Let's shut this off here so that doesn't burn. Then we have the, um, this is a grain bowl. It's made so it's in a warm single. warm when you eat. So the grain is warm and then the vegetables are warm. And I use in the recipe in the book, it's chicken, but you can use turkey, turkey here. Sure. Um, and I also saute the spinach, but you could use any leftover vegetables on a grain bowl. That's yeah. what's great about a grain bowl. So I put a mix of cooked and fresh vegetables. Awesome. So you have that cool, warm contrast, which is lovely. Mm -hmm. And then you get uh, the dressing is a tahini dressing. Mm. So tahini is a sesame paste. And it's really so simple. It's literally water, lemon juice, and tahini. And you stir it together. And it's creamy, and it's wonderful, and it goes perfect with the holiday leftovers. Awesome. You could put pretty much any. It's so you could put healthy but there. delicious looking. Healthy mm. and delicious. That's the sweet spot I'm yep. always <laughs> looking for. That's basically the key to good living. Yes, exactly. What is this? Um, so this is a soup, um, and mm. this is what I do with the soup. It's very hearty, so this is a one-pot meal. And you can use, again, some holiday leftovers for this. You could put leftover squash, green beans, peas, uh -huh. whatever. Um, and I put some quinoa in there. Oh, that's and great. turkey to make it a complete mm -hmm. meal. The quinoa make it a little really more filling and exactly. yeah, satisfying. So then it's a meal in a bowl. And that's good fuel for like, yeah. you know, holiday shopping. Well, too, you know, so. one of the things about <laughs> Thanksgiving is there are so many desserts that are available to us, but not many of them really good for us. But I see you have a fruit dessert. I love that idea. Yes. Yeah, so in the book, I have uh, all the recipes are complete meals, except the desserts, which uh -huh. I have, of course, you covered for better for you desserts, but also you want them to really satisfy your sweet tooth. So here it's roasted pears, and you could roast apples or uh -huh. figs or um, grapes, for Whatever example. You love. Yeah. And then I put that over just some crushed up ginger snaps. Ooh. So that adds a little element. It makes it really desserty. And then um, you could use some yogurt, some, here's mascarpone cheese. Mm. But you could do it with yogurt if you want. And then what you could do nicely too, if you have leftover cranberry sauce, ah. you could just put a doll up. It would be lovely on there. Beautiful. Well, so are all the other pictures in Ellie's book. Can I just grab this oh, from thank here? You. You're probably wanting to shoot it over here uh -huh. because it's easier for the camera. But I'm just going to tell you her book is called Whole in One. It's available wherever books are sold. Makes a great Christmas gift. So here we are celebrating Thanksgiving. Gives you some great ideas, creative ideas for tomorrow and days afterwards, but also a great Christmas gift for those who love to cook in your life. Thank you. Thank you, you always so make much. It a joy. To, Lovely to be here. To just kind of look at all the creations you bring with you. And it smells so good. Oh, it does. I wish there was smell of vision You'd be enjoying it right now. <laughs>
Army combat medic Jared enjoys the holidays with his family. He doesn't take it for granted when he's home because he's deployed multiple times throughout his career. Once he was gone for a year. Jared is quick to point out that he couldn't do his job if it wasn't for his wife, Ashton, taking care of their four children back home. I've always known in my heart and soul that they are completely fine and that she is doing a great job taking care of them, which is the biggest relief for especially a soldier in the Army. The couple has managed fine on Jared's Army salary. They live debt-free and always budget to give to others through their church. But that would change when they learned that some good friends were having legal trouble and needed Jared and Ashton to take in their two children until they sorted things out. The boys needed a home immediately. We had to make a decision in that moment or else they were gonna be put into the foster care system. And we knew the boys and we did not want that to happen. We loved them. It was a stretch to make it work with six kids. They had to begin buying necessities on credit. It was very hard on our paycheck. We were trying to figure out, well, how much money do we need for groceries? I mean, some days we were sitting there going, are we gonna be able to feed everyone today? After several months, the children were able to move back home, but by then, Jared and Ashton had thousands of dollars on credit cards. They prayed about a strategy to pay off the debt. For starters, Christmas would be very lean. There's nothing that Jared and I can do about it except for pray. And I, t I have total faith in God that he's bringing us out of that right now. God is always gonna provide for us and he will always make sure that we make it to that next step, um, especially with our finances. Their situation took a turn when their church, Bethel Community, teamed up with CBN's Helping the Homefront to bring in some holiday cheer. Pastor Richard Dixon told them CBN was going to help. They really wanna bless you. You wouldn't believe how much they want to bless you. <laughs> they actually want to give you $6,000 to pay off the debt that you guys have incurred. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. That's a lot. I don't, oh even my know, gosh. I don't even know what to say to that. Thank you. God is good. <laughs> That's amazing. And Pastor Richard told them CBM was also taking them shopping to buy Christmas presents for their children. I mean, thank you. <laughs> I mean, I... thank you, thank you, God. I mean, <laughs> wow. this is definitely going to change everything for us. I mean, even just last week, we were talking about how we're going to get out of this credit card debt, how long it's going to take us. This is going to fast track us to where we need to be so that we can get right back on to giving to others. Then it was time to go shopping. Jared and Ashton are forever grateful for helping the home front, getting them back on track. This is gonna change everything for us. This is gonna set us right back on course to being completely debt free. I'm so thankful for CBN and all that they're doing for us. This is really gonna change our lives. Isn't it wonderful to know that you can make a difference in someone's life like that? You know, it's wonderful to be able to stop. And I know so many people who do this when they see someone in the military and say, thank you for your service. I want you to know, 700 Club members, that you are absolutely making a significant difference in the lives of people who are giving their all for our country and just find themselves sometimes in times of need. So I want to say thank you to those of you who've already joined the 700 Club. To others who've not yet joined, what a wonderful opportunity to do that today, to be able to say thank you to someone else who's making a difference for all of us in this country in a significant way. That's just one of the things you do if you're a 700 Club member, but you're doing other things all around the world as well as here at home touching lives, giving people hope who are in hopeless situations. And you can do all of that for $20 a month, 65 cents a day. That's what it costs to be a 700 Club member. Will you call and join right now? Our number's toll free. It's 1-800-700-7000. Just call, say, I wanna be a 700 Club member. When you do, we want to say thank you for caring about others by sending you this DVD, The Nearness of Heaven. The stories in here are remarkable. People who have died for one reason or another, visited heaven, and then come back to life. They share what that experience has been like. It will build your faith, and we want you to have this. And we thank you in advance for caring enough to make a difference in the lives of people who find themselves in a point of need. Call today. This Christmas, we'd like to be part of your celebration. So we've prepared some special features just for you on CBN Family. 
You'll find Christmas music, scenic backgrounds for your gatherings, Christmas movies, and much more. All you have to do is join us at CBNFamily.com or download the CBN Family app to your smart TV or any of the Roku's or Amazon Fire's or Apple TV's. Uh, you can download the app. Do it today. Terry? Well, this Sunday marks the beginning of the Advent season, and it's not only a time to ponder the birth of Christ, it's also a time to anticipate His return. So what are the roots of Advent? When did the tradition start? And how can we celebrate it to the fullest? Take a look. Advent is a preparation period for Christmas. It was felt that because Easter had the preparatory season of Lent, Christmas as a great celebration should have a period of spiritual preparation. Although it's not clear when Advent was first celebrated, its roots go back to the fifth century when Catholic monks in France were ordered to fast during the month of December. It is a penitential season and it was taken as seriously as Lent, which meant heavy duty denial. You don't eat certain foods, certainly nothing fat or anything delicious. At the end of the sixth century, beginning of the seventh, Pope Gregory the Great said it would be four weeks, and it would focus on the four Sundays preceding Christmas Day, December 25th. In the more liturgical churches, such as Anglican or Catholic, you'll see that the church now becomes ready for Christmas. There'll be Advent candles, Advent wreaths, special Advent hymns, sung uh, sermons given, the Advent wreath, often made with evergreens, is a symbol of God's eternal nature, a circle with no beginning and no end. And there are four candles that are placed within this wreath. Three of the candles are purple, and one candle is rose pink. And on each Sunday of Advent, a candle is lit. The first and second Sundays of Advent are Sundays in which purple candles are lit because these are points of which the gospel readings have to do with warning and with preparation and with hope. And on the third Sunday, the pink candle is lit because it represents celebration and joy. We know the Lord is coming. We expect him to be here soon. On the fourth Sunday, the last purple candle is lit, symbolizing the royalty of Christ. Many people also mark the Advent season with calendars that count the days until Christ's birth. Some Advent calendars will have scriptures or depictions of different aspects of the Nativity story, promises of scripture concerning the Messiah, and others will have little treats or little toys. If you don't want to give chocolate, you can get a Lego Advent calendar. <laughs> so that would like be the ultimate modern adaptation. <laughs> The Advent season also comes with its own hymns. Christmas Eve and Christmas night. And we break all the rules because we start playing our Christmas music before Thanksgiving. So now we are really breaking the rules. O Come, O Come, Emmanuel is an Advent hymn. It comes from an ancient Latin poem the poem was written around the 12th century, and it was based on prayers that were written in around the 7th to 8th century. They were called the O Antiphons. Antiphons are proclamations about the coming Messiah taken from the prophet Isaiah. Around the 12th century, these titles were put into a song that existed only in Latin. This Advent hymn really has its roots deep, deep in church history and in the reflection of so many Christians over the centuries on these beautiful passages from the Old Testament that anticipate the coming of the Messiah and what he would do in the lives of his people. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. Oh, come, thou Lord of might is associated in the original antiphon with the appearance of God in the burning bush in Exodus chapter 3. 
the Lord of might who brings liberation to his enslaved people. And this attribute of might also is reflected in Isaiah when we talk about the names of God. He's the almighty God, the Father, the Prince of Peace. The rod of Jesse actually comes from Isaiah 11, verse 10, in which it's prophesied that a rod of Jesse will come who will deliver and liberate his people. Come and be the Davidic king. Come and be the ruler of your people. Come in your might and set us free. And close the path to me. O come thou day spring from on high, really refers to that scripture in Malachi 4. The son of righteousness will rise with healing in his wings. He will bring light and cast the light into the dark place. And this day spring is going to come and dispel the darkness in our lives to set free the hearts of human beings. The key of David comes from Isaiah 22:22, 22, 22, in which the Lord prophesies that he will give to him the key to the house of David, and he will open doors that no one can shut and shut doors that no one can open. For the early church, Advent was not only a time to prepare for the celebration of Christ's birth, it was also a time to anticipate his return. As they started to think about the meaning of Christ's first coming, they also try to personalize it within their lives. What did it mean for Christ to come to them individually? And of course, when we think of the first coming, we also think of the second coming. So the season of Advent started with a prayer and celebration of the Mass, which would focus on longing for Jesus to be real, to come into their hearts. And that idea led to prayers of desire and longing and repentance, but also prayers of hope and expectation and joy, because hope is based in the promises of God. This holiday season, journey around the world to discover the history of Christmas through CBN Films' Christmas, the story behind the traditions. It's a wonderful DVD. It'll add greater meaning to your holidays as you learn why December 25th is the historical birth date of Jesus, what the symbolism is behind Christmas trees and stockings, and how the tradition of gift giving began. If you'd like a copy, call to request a DVD copy of Christmas, the story behind the traditions, including instant 4K streaming access. We'll rush your DVD to you as you th we thank you for your gift of any dollar amount. You just call our 1-800-700-7000 number or you can visit cbn.com to order your copy today. Any dollar gift amount. It also makes a great Christmas gift. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks to God in Christ Jesus. These words kept coming back to Gene, even as he was serving a life sentence in prison for a crime he didn't commit. I was incarcerated in a state prison in Pennsylvania, serving a life sentence without the possibility of parole for a homicide that my cousin committed while we were out drinking one night. I was 17 years old, he was 24. I had no business being out. I had spent about 10 years at the state correctional institution in Camp Hill, Pennsylvania, before I was invited to come and listen to a, a prison revival message about Jesus in the gospel and I was lost. I was caught up in the drugs, I was caught up in the pornography, I was caught up in a lot of darkness. I heard the message, Jesus died and rose again, and in him there's eternal life, and real men make commitments. And I went up front and I got on my knees, and they led me through a sinner prayer. When I had served 11 years in on my life sentence, I was denied commutation by the governor's board, and it hurt, and I remember going back to my cell. The verse that I had been reading for a few years was Thessalonians. 
5, 17, and 18. And it says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and give thanks to God in Christ Jesus, for this is the will of God in Him concerning you. And I thought, giving thanks when things are going good is what we do and it is what most people do, but when things aren't going that well, when circumstances aren't to our benefit, will we give thanks? When I had 12 years in a prison system, I was denied again. When I had 17 years in a prison system, I went up again and I was denied. When I had 24 years in, I went up again and I was denied. 30 years in a system, I went up again and I waited two and a half years. It seemed like the longest time of my life. And I remember uh, receiving the response from the governor's office, it was denial. And I remember feeling it felt like a blow in my stomach, and I, I just tried to hold myself together. And I began to listen to the Holy Spirit tell me, I want you to go back to your cell, get on your knees, and give me thanks. And it, believe me, it was probably the last thing I wanted to do. And when I began to say thank you out loud, these three things came to my mind. I, I began thanking Him for protecting me. I began saying thank you for providing for me, and thank you for promoting me. I heard the Lord say, I'm going to release you, but it's not going to be based on your effort. Fast track forward, two years later, I found myself back in the court. The judge released me on April 3rd of 2012. The judge released me saying that I had spent 25 years over any sentence that I should have received as a 17-year-old, spending 34 years, nine months, and 15 days. I was released and I went home with my sister. About a week later, I asked my sister to call the courthouse and if I can go back and thank everybody. And I remember sitting in the courtroom with about 20 of the, the staff, and I remember thanking them for everything they've ever done for me over the past 20 months that it took for my release. And it was so humbling. And I thought, you know, I have a message for my peers. I have a message for everybody is to be grateful because that's God's will for our lives. God loves when you say thank you. You can begin to give God thanks, and you watch Him come into that situation just as He did for me. What a wonderful story. If you were in the same circumstance, would you give thanks? Would, would you understand that this is the will of God for you? Here's that verse from Thessalonians. Rejoice always. That means all the time in every circumstance. Rejoice always. Always means always. Pray without ceasing in everything. Everything means everything. Give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Now, let's unpack that. What does it mean to be in the will of God in Christ Jesus? Well, let's look to the cross. Here on the cross, Jesus is saying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. But before the cross, let's go back to the Last Supper. What's the psalm that Jesus and his disciples sing as they're ending the supper, as Jesus knows what's coming next? They cross the brook Kidron, and they go to the Garden of Gethsemane, and he prays that incredible prayer, God, your will be done, not my will, your will be done. Well, the last part of Psalm 118, which is the psalm he sang, is this incredible verse. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Now, consider being in Christ. Consider being in the one who said those, sang those words, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. If Jesus could sing that before Gethsemane, if he could sing that before the cross, let us give thanks in him, for this is the will of God. We see it clearly. In everything, give thanks. Whatever your circumstance, this thanksgiving Give thanks to the Lord God. Here's a word from Psalms 86. I give thanks to you, O oh my Lord, my God. With, all, with my whole heart, I will glorify your name forever. For all of us, happy Thanksgiving. 
and may you have a very wonderful time with your family.